Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're continuing our UK run with, of course, Charles Dickens at the helm of everything. He is currently the king and he's currently 78, so he's probably going to die sometime soon, uh, as one does, uh, you know, in Victoria 3 as they get this old because 75 is the mean age to die and he also has a negative uh, character health trait, so... When he eventually dies, we'll start using uh, resignations and abdications to finally clear our, uh, you know, significant radicalism. But we've also been reducing taxes, and so this is helping to clear it as well. Um, also, what we did last episode is we subjugated Occitania, uh, Spain, and Italy. Or, not subjugated, but we pulled them into our block, making use of the principal group for uh, tentacles. I mean, the principal group named uh, tentacle action. I mean, the principal group of the octopus. I mean, I can't have see it because I don't have eyes. For an investment. Um, which was kind of an interesting one, uh, because, generally speaking, I haven't been super thrilled with this um, uh, principal group, but I think in very narrow kind of situations, it can be really good uh, in the sense that it allows you to pull people into your block and so you can slot it in pull a bunch of people into your block uh, that you've kind of been massaging in the direction of your block uh, and then just slot it out uh, which is kind of what we did now we're kind of testing a little bit with food standardization trying to see how good it is i think this one's probably pretty solid slash middling uh, but we'll stick on it for a while also uh since last episode i discovered um it has come to my attention that uh when you go to annex a subject if they say yes to the subject interaction for annex which i don't think we can try and annex them uh, through this menu but if they say yes if we go to annex australia and we can't target them right now, uh, but if we go and say, hey, annex subject, um, if they say it'll be 75% chance that they say yes. If they say yes, apparently this doesn't give us the massive, uh, you know, uh, 0.2 malice on liberty desire to the rest of our subjects um, if they say yes. The 25% of the time they say no, however, you do get this, which in my mind makes it so that this is just a terrible play pattern because it makes it so you you don't want to annex your subjects. We haven't been annexing any of our subjects because it's just going to break your liberty desire and as they change attitudes to disloyal, um, this will give them negative catalysts diplomatically and they'll just hate your guts and it's just really frustrating and so you shouldn't uh, you know, the 25% is not worth it unless it's a really big subject or something like this. But this, like, is a bad play pattern because it's a RNG role where 75% of the time you're fine is A-OK. -okay. 25% you're just, like, super screwed because everyone's liberty of desire will go up to max. Um, they'll all get negative diplomatic catalysts. They will, like the EIC uh, did with us, uh, create negative lobbies uh, kind of against you, um, which is going to make it so that it is hard to decrease their loyalty again. And so but that this play pattern is tied so deeply into RNG and is not guaranteed, I really don't think I'm a fan of. Uh, and so moving forward, just to be clear, as abundant as possible, we will probably be safe scumming these roles. Um, just so we hit the 75% roll if we are going to try and annex anyone. And I think we're going to, but not quite yet, because we actually want to have a bunch of subjects for when we switch off of being the uh, Sovereign Empire power block. Uh, once we want to have a bunch of subjects, that way we can generate mandate quickly. You can see we're getting mandate in 13 months. Uh, we kind of want to be in a similar boat once we get off of it. So just to kind of give an idea of how much the food is helping us from that minus 10% mortality, uh, we have this minus 10% mortality modifier here uh, with the English Protestants uh, clerks in the Midlands. And uh, if we didn't have that, our annual mortality would be somewhere around a 1%. Uh, so instead of having a net growth rate of around, or it would be somewhere around 0.9%, let's say. So instead of having a net growth rate percent of 5%, um, we are having a net growth rate of 6%, so 20% more uh, growth rate on this pop in particular, um, not kind of including the fact that our standard of living is higher because of this uh, modifier that we're getting as well uh, off of the food company. You could see it hitch up immediately uh, by one full level when we get the food standardization, which is going to make pops more happy, uh, but also the agricultural throughput and efficient canning practices should decrease both the price of grain. Agriculture to my knowledge only applies to grain I think it might apply to um, uh, livestock as well but it's not going to apply to stuff like the uh, like if we take a look here which isn't even us it's our subject it's not going to apply to something like the tea um, it's only going to apply to the grain as far as I remember uh, but if we take a look here we can see if it applies to cattle as well uh, does it apply to cattle oh it does apply to cattle 
No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. It only applies to grain, but the making cheaper uh, slightly uh, by producing 10% more groceries out of all of our grocery production. Uh, so if we take a look at needs, if we produce 10% more groceries, this should depress the price of groceries slightly. Uh, so it'll make it so their buy package is a little bit uh, cheaper, maybe a uh, third of a percent cheaper, uh, which might be able to bring up their SOL one for some pops, uh, but also grain slightly cheaper as well bit interesting to think about how much this is going to improve overall SOL and population growth. If we are increasing our kind of regular population growth, now just kind of, that's not their population growth. Uh, if we're increasing this from like uh, 8% or 0.8% to 0.94%, something like that, um, or we are getting, you know, this 20% higher figure, this means we're getting maybe another 4 uh, or 400,000 a year or something like this. Overall, it doesn't seem like that strong, um, you know, a, a thing to be getting for an entire principal group. Uh, but it is an interesting principal group and we'll be kind of trying to keep an eye on how good we think it is. And maybe at some point we do a video about stacking SOL and trying to play for pop growth in particular. But I think generally most of the time it's going to be better to play for, um, you know, freedom of movement. Just in our situation, where are we getting migrants from that is not subjugated from us? Okay, this is us. This is our subject. Subject. Not us. Fair. Not us. Fair. Subject. Not us. Not us. Soon to be subject. Not subject, but we gotta get on that. Subject. Subject. Uh, not us. Subject. 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 Oh, not subject yet. Subject? Not long for this world, not long for this world, yeah, etc. But the point is, is almost all of the pop is already kind of within our sphere, so the migration at this point just kind of seems like a bit of a wash. So there is a company in Lima that I kind of think we actually want to make use of. Uh, so we're going to kind of show off what we mean with this annex subject. So 25% of the time we'll just be super screwed. So we'll just reload and instead of annexing on December 15th, we'll annex on December 16th. Um, and then 75% of the chance we just get this. Just like uh, it making such a big difference on the die roll is what feels really bad. I wish there was more of a gradient um, where, you know, you the penalty was lower, but there's like less success chance or even like uh the success chance uh, it, it, you get a penalty even when they uh you know can say yes but if we go this and they say yes to the dress then we will get no penalty um we just annex them we do get the infamy okay that's fair enough uh but there will be no ticking negative uh relation from us doing anything um and nor will anyone increase their autonomy uh at all these guys are all on their current autonomy their autonomy or sorry not their autonomy their liberty desire has hasn't gone up a lot or at all so it's just nothing bad happens to you or you just get like hit in the face and all your subjects hate you okay i apologize we've been being cowards uh we have not been increasing construction very much we have this huge investment pool and so we're gonna double or triple or do something to construction that's just absolutely huge we will be able to get a subjugation off on occitania it having been five years after this we will be subjugating uh, Spain. Uh, it's not quite been five years, I don't think. Um, and we don't have enough cohesion anyways. Oh, they have to be less than a major? What? Really? I could have sworn that Ukraine was a major when we went after them, but that's okay. We, there's ways that we can decay their prestige down below 533, but I guess we gotta keep that in mind for Italy as well, uh, who is also going to have to come down, or actually they're a minor, so we can go after them. But Spain, somehow we're gonna have to figure out how to get their prestige level lower. Um, other than we can just keep annexing guys and deleting military, or sorry, building military. This is how we've been increasing our prestige, and our prestige pulling it up, as well as pulling up the average is going to do a lot and so annexing a bunch of boys is going to help we're also taking a little bit of a crack at the usa looking to break them up a bit uh because they have a ton of provinces and we do want to be able to subjugate them uh at some point and so we are going for just releasing a bunch of stuff and war reparations we're not actually um annexing anything so this is going to help us to be able to uh you know, bite them down a little bit. We do want to get them in a position like Russia is right now, where Russia's a minor power. So even though they have an enormous amount of states, uh, that it would take us a few wars to, you know, kind of 
uh, fully annex them, uh, we can be able to subjugate them as soon as we want. Um, but man, I'm trying to think of the best way for us to, I guess we just gotta keep going after some of these guys like Funge and the like. Um, unfortunately, Canty Mancy did get recognition, and so now it's gonna take like six infamy to annex them instead of like one or two. Um, and we are running out of small powers to annex. We might have to start annexing some of our subjects here that are unrecognized uh, in order to pull down the average just so Spain will be subjugatable. Uh, but we are just gonna wait for our cohesion to come on up anyways um, before we could do anything anyways. So this will be fine and we'll just be waiting on our cohesion to get above 60 or even just cap out to whatever the cap is before we take a look at trying to annex a bunch of our subjects so that we can uh, maybe decay Spain down into being a minor power. A bit unfortunate. Um, but they're not that that far off of minor power. Following the war with the USA, we decided to rival them, mainly just to get some extra approval out of the industrialists, and I don't think we're ever going to side on their side of anything ever, ever, ever again. Um, we, I mean, we could try and get bankrolls, but we honestly don't need them. We increased taxes a little bit to help pay for the additional construction we uh, had built. We're still going to try and ramp some more up, uh, but it is a little sticky. It is a little bit difficult. Russia's also going for this, and since these guys became recognized, uh, we're going to let them have it, and also, these guys, we discovered, hey, that's impassable terrain. We actually can't invade them here. Uh, so we're just going to leave them alone. And if Russia conquers them back too, that's also super fine. The main reason we're fine with it is we don't think Russia is going to get out from being a minor power very easily. They're at 283 prestige. They need 572. I don't think this is going to happen. And if they are eliminated guys off the map, it helps for us uh, to be getting the uh, rank, power rank of these guys down. Um, we see that oh, 515. It wasn't that high or it wasn't that low below before. Uh, to that end, we're to the end of making it difficult or easier for them to decay down or more difficult for them to stay a major power. We're going to be adding a few ships here and there. Uh, we're bringing up some new navies. These are kind of expensive, but it's not too big a deal. And it is one of the ways we can uh, kind of increase our prestige in a way that is uh, a little bit easier to get army power projection uh, from uh you know, Navy, we're getting 206 or 2,600. It's not the lion's share of our prestige, but it is a pretty big chunk. We are getting, you know what we could also build? We could build a whole bunch of, yeah, we could build a whole bunch of power block statues, which would cost a ton of construction, but each one of these is going to give us three prestige. So maybe that's even reasonable. If we built 50 of them, that's like 150 prestige. Um, but, uh, I think that they're, in theory, not really worth it if you're not getting the uh, decreased decree cost uh, benefit, but, I mean, maybe we spam them a little bit uh, more uh, in order to get some prestige. I don't... I mean, maybe this is a thing. All right, different day, same shirt, except it's a different shirt. But what we are going for here is we're still trying to decay their per, uh, their prestige down. What we've done is we've canceled all of our trade routes with them. And since their economy is super polarized towards, you know, the cotton and the textiles that we built in them, uh, this will hopefully collapse them quite a bit. They should be able to kind of renew their own trade routes. But I think that... Um, we might just be delaying going the high infamy route because I don't really like playing high infamy stylistically, but that's what you need to do to eventually do a world conquest. And so maybe I'm just prolonging it off of this kind of nitpicky thing where it's theoretically a little bit better if we get Spain as a protectorate beforehand. And it's like really not that big a deal. I think at the very least we will wait for Italy because we will be able to subjugate Italy uh, relatively shortly um, in uh, just two years. And in the meantime, we can still make use of kind of the final meme of the really, really reduced infamy uh, in going for uh, the Turkey right here because we're going to get uh, all the discounts in all the places. Um, it would be a 50x uh, multiplier normally, except for. It's not. Uh, it's going to be only 16 and a half infamy in order to go after them, which is, of course, next to nothing, considering what's going on. And also, this will significantly reduce the amount of convoys that we are re required to use for port connections, uh, because we'll only have to connect into Turkey now, um, and so this will be pretty good. And I think after we do that, after we subjugate Italy, we will be swapping over. So this episode, I think the overall texture of this episode is we're really preparing for high infamy. We've been reorganizing a ton of battalions in this sort of thing we do need to be able to fight um probably everyone at once and i think we can fight everyone at once with our current military but we could add a little bit more here and there in order to try and make it a little bit better not that we're going to do it right now but for the record annexing the heavenly kingdom only costs 10.9 infamy and uh they have a population of i think over 100 million so 100 million souls for 10.9 infamy 
Oh, sorry, 300 billion souls for 10.9 infamy. Who knew the price was so low? All right, so I did want to take a look at just how many convoys we recover. So we're currently using 12,200 in port connections. And how much does is this reduced uh, by changing the shipping nodes? I imagine it'll take two ticks, uh, kind of of thinking. Uh, but we went from 12... Oh my god, look at that. Look at that. It reduced by... Uh, what is this? Oh, wait, sorry. Was that... That's a hundred and... Wait. It was a hundred and... 20,000 and it was reduced by 20,000 just by shifting over what's going on um, you know Great Britain uh, unfortunately as an island uh, you do always kind of have to pay some amount of shipping and it's not really easy to get good shipping lanes if you start out as someone like Turkey you can get really good shipping lanes very easily just by going through Persia and just kind of going through this belt uh, but that is a huge refund that's going to allow us to do way more trade uh, and is going to allow us to you know kind of if we want uh, come on off of uh what is it what is it we're running right now for making these work it was a company yep so uh I, at this point i don't think we need this company because the entire point of this company was increasing our convoys and increasing our prestige uh more so than the actual company being good itself so we'll find something else to substitute in so I think we're going to slot in the generic munitions company. I don't know if this one's best, but it certainly seems themey uh, in terms of preparing for a grand campaign against the entire world, and will give us minus military goods cost. Also, consideration was the Frederick Kripp company, uh, which would have been uh, pretty nice. Uh, overall, I don't think it has as good uh, companies on it, which is kind of why we didn't go with that one. Uh, but that one would have given us extra kill rate, uh, and railway building throughput's a pretty good modifier, so maybe we end up slotting it in eventually anyways. Uh, but we already have a steel company, and so I figured that we would prefer to get the explosives. Also, um, we, in terms of a huge pro proportion of our military goods, are actually just explosives. Uh, because we have, let's take a look at goods for military buildings. We're spending a lot on ammunition, that's true. I guess we're spending a lot on this stuff, but a big chunk of it is explosives, a bigger chunk than normal, because of how many ships we have. Uh, and those ships are mainly, predominantly, uh, going to be torpedo boats, and torpedo boats, uh, consume uh, ironclads and explosives and they don't consume ammunition ammunition is not very efficient pm um, and so i think we'd rather consume just straight up explosives and so we're adding about another hundred navy up to a navy of about 700 gratuitous but we'd want to just kind of have navies everywhere um, that can respond to things and do landings and this type of stuff um, and uh, so we want to have a big navy and if you look at all these other pms they do have ammunition input and so so uh, we would rather just be straight explosives and ironclads. Explosives PM on the very last one is very good. And there's no explosives input on scout cruisers. So I don't think we're going to use any scout cruisers. We don't need the advantages scout cruisers provide in terms of uh, the better stats or the convoy uh, escort defense. It's really kind of irrelevant. Uh, we don't need the extra combat from the capital ships. We're just having a bigger navy, and so uh, this should be more than fine. We definitely don't need any of this, and so none of these PMs, all of them consume a bunch of ammunition. So we're going to make this uh, semi-economic decision of both the company as well as focusing entirely on um, torpedo boats more than any other ship. Just a little bit of an update in terms of our building tall in some spots that we've been encouraging migration. Just wanted to show off them a little bit. Um, we have 11 million in Yorkshire, uh, uh, 13.5 million in Lancashire, uh, 21.7 million in Midlands, 15 million in the home counties. We have been encouraging migration to some other key areas. We got 4 million in Transvaal, 2.7 million in Freestadt. Uh, we have 4 million in Para, 2 million in Madagrasso, uh, 1.5 million in Guyana. Uh, we also have been encouraging migration out towards these areas, but it hasn't been as effective. Um, we haven't touched anything with authority in forever because we have so many edicts in and because we've started annexing our guys that we we are just in a deficit no matter what we do and so any sort of rearranging we just let our stuff fall off and so we don't want to do that uh, but just to kind of give an idea of where our decrees have been this entire time uh, just where our decrees have been this entire time. We have mostly have greener grass uh, decrees. They are in all these spots, uh, mostly kind of in the homelands, but also in these other areas. We have a few encouraged manufacturing degrees. Uh, these places are building up the manufacturing really tall. A big reason why we wanted to build up here instead of someplace like China, despite the labor being in China and trying to track the pops here, is going to be that convoy cost that we were kind of emphasizing. And we promote social mobility in these places for increased literacy, knowing that they 
would come up and also in all of these Chinese provinces which we have incorporated which is one of the reasons why we have a relatively high literacy up here. We also have road maintenance in a couple of these areas uh, for the increased construction speed and infrastructure, which is quite nice. Uh, synergizes quite well with boosts that we are getting from our companies uh, for railway throughput. We are using a, a company that gives railway th uh, throughput or one of the railroad companies, and so this is quite nice. So this means that we overall do not have to build a lot of railways in order to support a very large amount of infrastructure here. So unfortunately, Italy has also become a major power, which is a little bit awkward. We can try and deleting all of our trade routes with Italy, uh, but I don't think, well, maybe this is enough to sh uh, push them under. They really are kind of reliant on a lot of our trade routes, uh, but it's very unfortunate that we didn't notice them getting that close, uh, because a little inattentive on my part, uh, them getting that close to that uh, position. So they're at 37 million GDP, expecting to see that just tank, uh, you know, kind of over the course of a little bit. Uh, yeah, there we go, it's starting to come down. They're starting to crash out, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough to decrease them down to minor power. And even then it has to be for an extended period of time. And time is probably something we should play around a little bit. And so I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to let both Italy and Spain go here, unfortunately. And we are going to swap to a different block type. We are going to swap from the British Empire, and we are going to form a new power block. And we are going to form a military treaty, mainly because we want aggressive coordination one uh, for the minus 30% war goal maneuver cost. And the only way to get aggressive coordination is to actually have a military treaty. And so as we transition to high infamy, we're going to want to do this. We've made our banner be, of course, a singular world, one earth, one people, our people. And we, of course, are being led by the great globe themselves with the many hands and, of course, the top hat. And who could forget their crude hub? Oh. And so this is going to be what power block we are making. Oh no, we need some influence. Actually, how are we going to get some influence? Hmm, this actually presents a little, a little bit of problems. We're getting minus influence from Charles Dickens. Is it time for him to step down? Not quite yet. We can't, we can't ask him to do that. We can't ask him to do that. So we are actually going to find some place to rake back the influence as well as uh, if we could see if we could rival anyone. So we could rival France and we could try and figure out some other areas to get influence in order to pay for this. Charles Dickens, of course, is prepared for battle. I have no idea how this guy's still alive. I, this is the longest I've ever seen anyone who I cared about living live, and this has also been the longest I've seen anyone live, uh, you know, kind of with a negative character health trait. He's been a great king, a grand king, the best of kings, Charles Dickens. But I don't think we want him to see what happens next. Instead, what we have is we have two agitators. We have Lion McFarlane, whom we didn't even notice before, but particularly we want this trait now. The reckless trait, terrible trait, gives plus infamy generation, basically the opposite of Charles Dickens, but it gives extra maneuvers per diplomatic play. We want this on our leader. And so we are going to be trying to get one of these guys in the office. This is the guy we invited. He is way more popular, so we're going to look to get him in office instead. And he is, of course, cocaine addict, which is a big nice uh, as it relates to being popular. A uh, little not less nice for the health. To be fair, this guy probably doesn't last quite as long, uh, but he is popular, so he's more likely to win elections, and so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be provoking a rev. That way, uh, dear old Charles Dickens, he's been a great king. He's a little too old for the job now. We're going to have him step down. He's going to retire off into the sunset, not to die via assassination. He survived one assassination attempt already. Um, but uh, what instead we will do with him is we are going to provoke a rev, and then we are going to grant leadership to this gentleman here, Mr. Gustav Wadelstein, or Wadenstein, close enough. Uh, and so let's make the labor guys really, really mad, and then let's slot everyone but them into government. Or, hmm, let's do this. Perfect. We will certainly be able to pass something that they hate. They do not like this. Do they hate anything more? They certainly hate autocracy more, now don't they? That will get them to minus 21. Uh, we will pile everyone in to government. That is not them, because we definitely want them winning. Actually, wait. Let's pile them in for just a moment, so that we can put uh, Mr. This guy in charge. We will grant him leadership. He is now our guy, my guy. Nice shades, bro, uh, as one does. 
and then we will reform the government, slot him out of government. This is, of course, uh, the abdication cheese, which we haven't, I don't think we've used a single time. Oh, except to get Charles Dickens in office. That's right, we did use the abdication to do that. We will do this. These guys will be absolutely livid. So this will pop the revolution movement. And we also entered in a play to annex the Heavenly Kingdom. We just wanted to get the infamy reduction off of Charles Dickens uh, for this play in particular because it will help us to generate a little bit more mandate. We are, our cohesion is just going to tank uh, very, very low because we get minus from being a block, um, power block member with the highest infamy uh, and rank. And so I don't even know if this caps at 100. So this might just mean we are perma zero mandate with the military treaty. Uh, but, uh, you know, we want that extra maneuvers. Uh, we are annexing these boys. Uh, Tibet doesn't immediately help them out because they're just a protectorate. So fair enough. We kind of hope to, to hope Tibet sides with them. But we will be taking care of that just shortly. And the big part here is that presidential republic should get... There we go. It is now revolutionary, and so we will abdicate to the movement. We will say, goodbye, you've done well. We don't want you to see what happens next. We don't want you to see what Great Britain becomes under the rule of this new gentleman. Uh, we will do the second option, which will give minus choices, and we will get a presidential republic. Um, and we will say, goodbye, sweet Charles Dickens. Um, Wait, did he immediately become an agitator of ours? No, you're supposed to retire, my guy. Okay, he didn't. And in return, our new king... We don't have a king. Uh, we should be able to stop putting in whatever law we're doing. Uh, so, because we don't actually want that law. Uh, and then we will put the trade unions in charge. And it should be Gustav Wadenstein. Wow, he even looks... He looks very aggressive. Is that reckless and opium addict? Making him look so... So aggressive here, but we have Wadenstein in here. We're gonna exit reform government, the full righteous Wadenstein, and of course, righteous he will be in the violence that is to come. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. We kind of like that we have Lion McFarlane, mainly because we love his name as Lion, but also because he serves as a backup, so we will, of course, give him Ambitious, which we do not mind. Ambitious would have been really nice for reducing edict costs, by the way, in terms of stacking modifiers, but now we have another guy in the chamber who has Reckless. Just in case this Reckless boyo, uh, you know, kind of gets an office, we have a second Reckless boyo. That's what's called being cautious with your Recklessness. You always have a backup Reckless for your... You cautiously always have a backup Reckless for your Recklessness, yeah. You know, in retrospect, we almost certainly should have waited until we finished the war with China uh, before abdicating, because we would have reduced uh, the radicals by so, so, so much, and this would have actually been pretty useful. Uh, but we couldn't resist the meme of just not letting him watch. Let the boy watch, except don't. Um, so I think we're going to conclude this episode here. This episode, we annex China, uh, as one does. But more importantly, we're prepared for kind of a world conquest where I think we're going to have a go at it next episode where we will just um, just crank up to max infamy. Uh, it's looking like we're not going to be able to uh, maintain very much cohesion anyways here. Uh, maybe we wait the seven weeks. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we're just going to end up getting construction in terms of a principle uh, and then we do maybe the military one uh, but other than that that's probably it for us for principles for the rest of the run really not going to be able to make use of much except for we did want to have uh, this minus 30% war goal maneuver cost uh, for the diplomatic play initiator I just thought we would be able to develop the mandate a little bit faster with all of our subjects but it's not seeming like it but I guess we'll still have a lot of subjects we'll just have no cohesion and maybe we get some through and this will be fine uh, but uh, you know we're, we're really well set to be able to do this it's not going to require too too many wars because there aren't that many countries left on the map which of course was the goal and also once we start gobbling up uh, some of our subjects they'll all start joining in and dogpiling and then when they dogpile we can annex multiple ones in one go so that'll be uh, a little bit easier for us um, we are going to deal with this rev of course but other than that um, I think we're kind of set for next episode I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe do the YouTube algorithm thing and have a good day